colony collapse disorder came in a few years ago and media reported it all over the place because we were hitting we were getting hits on about oh, say 30 percent of our bees were losing every year in the last few years um, the new numbers just came out for um, this past year 2009 and it was more like a 40 percent loss um, that the conventional um, beekeepers were having and yet when you look at the com the organic beekeeping movement we are not having those losses at all we're having much less than say five percent and I, this is anecdotal it's from bee groups that I'm in and all but when you look at forty percent bee losses versus less than five percent bee losses take a look at what are the difference between the two the two camps and what they're doing there are behaviors that we really need to change in our approach to bees if you only had three or four things that you were doing the bees still are resilient enough to get past it but when you start doing a whole bunch of them we knock the bees out and that really is we're causing the problem more than the bees are having the problem independent of, and if I could name it to one thing weakening the bees immune system the weaker the immune system the easier the easier it is for any kind of a virus or or whatever to come in and stomp on the bees so the stronger we can make these immune systems in the bees the better off the bees are going to be that's really where our role comes in if we're going to be beekeepers then stop thinking what we've got to attack and kill to get to so that it doesn't hurt the bees think of how can i make my bees stronger how can i make my bees the the best expression of beeness <laughs> that's possible many beekeepers use insecticides to kill off the mites to protect their bees bad idea the reason for that is because it's an insecticide it's it kills everything <laughs> and the when you're doing this you're trying to kill you're trying to put enough poison on them to kill the mites, but not kill the bees, or at least not to kill too many of the bees. We don't give our bees any miticides, and we, we have never done that. And the bees are doing just fine, thank you very much. And you're finding this with a lot of organic beekeepers, too. We are doing okay without the miticides. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Conventional beekeepers give foundation that encourages bees to be bigger, and also it's a shortcut in that the bees don't have to build their own comb. But the bees want to build smaller comb. They want to build smaller comb because that's one of the ways that they break the cycle of mite reproduction within the hive. Mites lay their eggs inside of the little bee cell and with a bigger bee that takes a longer gestation cycle to develop, that mite cycle matches up perfectly. If you have smaller bees, what happens is that the mite isn't quite ready to be born and then the bee is born and then that break, starts to break the cycle down. In the genetics, what we're doing with them is we're screwing around with um, a weak genetic pool and making bees that you can purchase from a company. With that, whenever you're letting um, bees made in the wild, you're getting that whole genetic diversity that really makes those bees um, stronger and stronger. A lot of people are taught to keep hives from swarming. The reason we're taught to do that is because it cuts into our honey production. Hives won't swarm if they're weak. They'll swarm when everything is really, really good in that hive. Then I've got a healthy hive that's left behind, and I've got a hive that's so healthy that they went off and made a new hive. Then I've got two hives here, and they're both healthy. Why would you buy bees from Wisconsin that are going to live in Washington? Keep supporting the, the local gene pool of the bees rather than importing other ones. Migratory beekeepers are the ones who move them from, they follow the flow. Uh, they take them from the orange blossom flows in Florida over to the almond blossoms in California and up to the blueberries in Minnesota. Um, and, and that causes a lot of stress to the bees. The much simpler solution would be wherever you've got one heavy production of one certain kind of flower, plant other things around there so that you can leave the bees in one place through all the different seasons much much healthier for the bees that would be a big contribution to bee health i'm lance sunberg uh, i started beekeeping in 1972 i'm 52 years old started in the eighth grade with one beehive that i ordered out of a sears and roebuck catalog i keep 6700 colonies now in 2010 and it's a uh, difficult, challenging business, but it still can be rewarding, I guess. <laughs> Usually Montana ranks fifth in honey production in the United States. I am 
has 64 commercial beekeepers, and I'm not sure what the average is because they go all the way from uh, 800 colonies to 14,000 colonies. And if you want to rank me on colony size, I probably rank fifth in Montana as the fifth largest beekeeper in Montana. I was on CBS with Katie Kirk and in the New York Times and on National Public Radio, all with the CCD issue two, two and three years ago. Colonies in the United States right now and in and worldwide, we're losing about 40% per year, every year. The biggest percentage I ever lost was 38%. And so I ended up buying $150,000 worth of Australian packages to fulfill my obligations to my almond growers one year. Almost all beekeepers in Montana are now uh, migratory commercial beekeepers where they, I guess we live like gypsies if you want to call us that. Um, in our case, we winter bees in the San Luis Obispo and the Santa Maria area and backtrack back to the Central Valley or San Joaquin Valley to pollinate almonds. Then we do our spring increase the latter parts of, parts of March and first part of April and then I move everything to pollinate apples, cherries, and pears, starting from the Oregon border and finish my way at the Canadian border. The, the almond industry in California um, is who really runs the bee business in the United States, more so than even the honey production. Um, 1.6 million colonies are just for that one crop. 60% of all the bees in the whole United States go due to that one pollination. With agriculture anymore compared to 30 years ago, uh, monoculture style beekeeping is way more prevalent now than it was back then. We get paid by the colony strength when we go into almonds, so we have kind of an intensive management program to try to make them so the hives are um, unusually big for the time of year than normal, which which creates another management problem because you have swarming issues at the end of almonds more so than you would normally. We used to just medicate once a year for varroa mites, and now um, it seems like we have to do it more like three times a year. What are you finding that's effective on mites? Um, well, Amitraz products are the most common ones still used, and they're, and they're not legal. Um, oh yeah, we've got mites, but I think that's some of our lesser problems. Now, we can deal with mites, but uh, it's disappearing, or CCD, or whatever they call it. Nobody knows for sure what's causing the problem. It's serious. About three years ago, we lost half of our output. We run over 5,000 colonies of bees, so we're talking 2,500 colony loss. How is it that you're dealing with the mites? Well, we use the commercial chemicals that are available, and that's all we can do. But, uh, but uh, these bugs are building up resistance to all these chemicals. That's a lot of the problem. And you can control them for a while, and then they get resistance, and then they take off again. And how, so, do, uh, how do the bees react to the miticides that you use? Well, they don't like them. Like Conventional beekeepers take away the honey in the fall and use it for themselves and then feed them back sugar water all through the winter. Not a good idea, really. What are bees designed to eat? Honey. Feed them honey. Feed them what they're designed to eat. That'll make them much, much healthier. And don't be feeding them honey from that you buy in the supermarket either because that honey, I've talked to people at the USDA who said when they tested, sure enough, the honey that was at the supermarkets had um, it had spore in it for some of the diseases that can get passed around. Bees that are fed pollen and nectar that comes from a lot of different sources of flowers are a lot healthier than bees that get it from just one source. So many people use pesticides these days. Educate the public as much as you can to get off of the pesticides. They harm the bees, they harm the environment, and I don't even need to go into that anymore in depth. But educate people that one bee coming home with pesticide on it can kill an entire hive. Um, with the hives too, don't get them down by the ground. That's too low, it's too damp, too much dampness in there, and that really causes a problem inside the hive. You want to have the hives about 30 inches high off the ground.
If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about beekeeping, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.